Hello and welcome back to the Manufacturing Culture Podcast. I'm your host, Jim Mayer, and today we've got an electrifying episode lined up for you. But before we dive into the heart of today's conversation, let me remind you to check us out at manufacturingculturepodcast.com. You can also connect with us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram to keep up with all the latest episodes, insights, behind the scenes action, all the fun stuff. And there's merch on there. If you want a hat, sweatshirt, shirt, uh, go check out the website. A big shout out to our show sponsor, Speroni, who's a pioneer in precision and innovation, making this and every episode that we make possible. And we've got a new partner, Shop Floor Coffee, uh, which keeps our conversations lively and our spirits high with their brews and and cups of coffee. Uh, So, Now let's get into this uh, episode. Let's gear up for an exciting journey into the world of manufacturing with our guest, Danny Hill Jr. Danny is not just any CNC machinist. He's a master of the craft with a career rich in experience across aerospace, automotive, and production work. Whether it's navigating the complexities of horizontal and vertical mills or collaborating closely with leadership and coworkers, Danny excels in driving safety, productivity, efficiency, and on-time delivery to new heights. Currently flexing his programming and machining muscles at Tag Engineering, Inc., Danny has been making significant impacts in the field since April of 22. But that's not where his story starts. With a foundational role in CNC machinist training through the Jane Adams Resource Corporation and invaluable experiences at ATI Performance Products, Inc. and Reloid Primus Aerospace, Danny's journey is a testament to his dedication and skill. At Auto Master, from the workshop floor at Auto Masters as an auto technician to the precise world of CNC machining, Danny has seamlessly transitioned through roles, showcasing his adaptability and expertise. His holistic understanding of the machining process, combined with a keen eye for innovation and efficiency, makes him a force to be reckoned with in the manufacturing landscape. So buckle up as we plunge into insights, experiences, and stories from Danny Hill Jr., a true maestro of machining who brings the worlds of aerospace and automotive to life through his exceptional craft. It's going to be an episode filled with inspiration, learning, and of course, a lot of machining magic. Let's get started. Danny Hill, welcome to the Manufacturing Culture Podcast, my man. How are you doing today? Hey, Jim. Hey, hey, how everybody doing? Thanks for having me, Jim. Thanks for having me. Glad to be aboard. Absolutely, my man. Uh, it's uh, Super Bowl Sunday this weekend. Yes, yes, uh, yes, yes. I've got a, a big show with you today. Um, it's like my Super Bowl, kind of in a way, right? Yeah, um, let's go. Let's get it. Let's get it. Un- unfortunately, my guys got <laughs> bumped right now, but you know, we'll we, we catch them again next year. How about that? I like that. I like that. And Danny, who's your pick in the Super Bowl? Who's your pick in the big game? Hey, listen. Honestly, you know. Since my guys got bumped, I'm not even paying the Super Bowl no mind. I'm going to be totally honest, man. My guys got bumped. It, 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 took, it took my guy a, a lot to get get going. So once he got going and, and he didn't make it, man, I'm just through with the whole Super Bowl. Uh, I'm, I'm going to enjoy myself with me and my family and my grandson, man. And I'm, right. and I'm just going to go like that. I'm already upset. I'm already <laughs> upset about it. So All right. I will try not to upset you any further. We'll leave the football but, but, to but, the but, side. But uh, I'm I'm going for Kansas City. I'm going for Kansas City. They uh they most definitely uh they took control of the whole situation they when it came down to us. Uh, we dropped the ball. So Kansas City, I'm I'm rooting for them. All right, all right. I I wish you the best, my man. I wish you the best, uh, Danny. First question I ask every guest: What's your journey been? How have you gotten to where you were in life to where you are now? Tell us your story. Whoa, 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 whoa. So, so, uh, as we know, Baltimore City, right? So, so is it, is the it, it's it's kind of rough out here in this area. But uh, sometimes you you just choose the wrong paths and you you get in trouble. So, uh, I found myself taking this uh, CNC training. Uh, once I once I got, I got out of the streets and I uh, and I I just had to do something different. I, once I found the CNC training, 
I went full force with it. Uh, it was a crunch course. It, it was hard getting through the course. But once I got through this course, I realized how much money I can make in this field, and I can start mm-hmm. growing from there. Uh, but from coming out the door with four certifications at Jane Adams Resource Center, uh, showed me a whole bunch of different opportunities there. Uh, it's it just it's just a lot they had going on, and I was taking cold advantage of all the opportunities that they had. So coming from out of Jock, um, I obtained uh, four certifications: CNC, uh, a milling. I'm set up operation programming, and I just wow. been climbing the ladder ever since. Uh, before job, you know, uh, with a, a criminal background, as, as they say, uh, it's, it's hard. Uh, it's hard to get a job out here. So what yeah. I done, I just had to just, get, just figure out how can I make this happen with the background that I have, uh, being a career criminal. So so the route that I chose, I said, okay, once I get through this situation that I was in, it was full. It was full force. So. Uh, I got out my situation. I took up the training, training, and I've been going. I've been climbing the ladder ever since with this training. Uh, like I said, f- from interviews and interviews, just getting turned down from my background, uh, having charges on my back. To once now, obtained the, the necessary certifications. The now I'm, I'm full force. These these companies and these employees cannot tell me anything. I know my worth. And I just had, it took me a second to climb the ladder, but uh, I'm headed in that direction. Okay. I like it. I like it. Uh, Danny, um, I I work with an organization in San Diego yeah. called Rise mm-hmm. Up Industries. Uh, they help previously incarcerated humans uh, transition into to roles in manufacturing. I'd love to make the introduction with you to them. Uh, uh, and and maybe you can speak to their uh, their students, their, their apprentices, or even help out. They n- now have a youth outreach program right, right, uh, right, to, yeah. to help uh, prevent the the people going and being incarcerated in the first place, right? We, um, we, we need this, Jim. This is a must need. Uh, what we have out here in Baltimore City, you know, is, is a recycling uh, thing going around uh, in and out of jail systems. What they, What's going on is the, the dads are getting locked up out here. So now... Um, the, the the children are offending and, and they growing up, they growing up. So my goal is, so I know how it felt to come out that situation. So I got five boys myself. So my, okay. my five boys and um, I'm, 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 I'm rolling full force. One of my sons, I got him in, uh, I, he just took up the same training at Jane Adams Resource Center. So he awesome. ready to come out of there with his certification. So my goal is to direct many youth to Jane Adams Resource Center, much as I can, um, I said I can lead them to the water, but they're gonna have to drink it themselves. And and I, I I find myself they they just don't have no guidance. There's so many resources out here, and we need to stand up and, and man up and just try to direct them much as we can. Just just get them in, into manufacturing. I love manufacturing since I've been into it. Um, I had careers at the careers, I had jobs at the jobs, but this is it right here for me. And I'm yeah. introducing my sons to it. I said, I'm waiting for him just to complete this right here so I can get him started and get him rolling. And uh, and, and that's, that's the journey. Like I said, I'm always referring people down to this training facility to get the training. They don't ha- have just uh, CNC training. They have uh, uh, welding as well and other resources uh-huh. linked to other different uh, uh, occupations. So, so the goal is to just get them in there and just th- th- they can go from there. They got career coaches in there. Uh, they got uh, first-time homeowners um, um, programs and, and credit-building programs. So this is the perfect opportunity to get these kids in there. Um, once again, I also, from LinkedIn, I got connected with a guy in Canada. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if you know this or not, that uh, Canada, they have VR, virtual reality, CNC milling training programs in, in Canada. No, so, I did not. That's so, amazing. So, Listen, so he reached out to me. He said, hey, Danny, I see that you're you, you uh, a CNC um, machinist, and, and we will, I would like to have a conversation. So me and a guy, uh, he from in Canada, he reached out to me. We had a strong conversation. He gave me details of how this VR system operates, and guess what? It was a perfect opportunity to connect with him and Jane Adams Resource Center. So we just awesome. working some things out like that. So you know the, the younger generation, the VR virtual reality is 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 is, is, is where that. 
So we got yeah. got to tap into what they like and, and yeah. just get them to understand that y'all are the next ones up. We need y'all ideas. So we come, I'm, I'm coming at my kids, my sons, and, and I'm just trying to just get them interested in, in the trade and just go from there. I love it. I love it, man. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite parts of your, your presence, speaking of LinkedIn, is uh, your tagline, Manufacturing Heroes, Ooh. we need you. Ooh. Oh, man, Ooh. with that flexing robot. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, hey, 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 Jim, hey, Jim, that's my signature move. And it's like, you know what? You know, Batman is my, my, my thing. Batman is my guy. If you, right. if you pay right. attention, Batman is my guy. You know, I like Batman because Batman never had no superpowers. He always had gadgets. He always yep. was original. You get what I'm saying? So my take, like, okay, let's call all these manufacturing. Everybody talking a lot of talk. Let's call them out. If you bought what you say you bought, like my man Andrew Crow, he doing big things in the field. And if you bought yep. what you talking about, get on the team and let's get going. We calling all manufacturing because manufacturing, we need y'all. We need everybody to come up. We got yep. Megan Zimba. Yeah. What she doing big things on the women's the manufacturing side. We, man, the manufacturing industry is taking off and it's only going to get better and better and better. Um, I, have one, I have one of my sons right now. He's in Widener, uh, Widener College in PA. I got him um, taking up mechanical engineering. I got another son in Loyola, Maryland, taking up mechanical engineering. And I'm trying to just connect with them to just get them to understand that the engineers and the programs, we come hand to hand. Yeah, I I need you. I'm telling yep. my kids, I need you. We need y'all good ideas. Same way, uh, I I explained to them like this, like, uh, what you, how you think cars was made? We had yeah. we had horses at first, and then we had horses and cars. Then we had cars with the wooden wheels. Now somebody came up with a better idea with the circle wheels. Now we got testers out here. It started yep. with it starts with the idea. We need your ideas, and that's why I'm trying to just connect my kids, my, my, my let my boys with this. You get what I'm saying? I do, and I love I love your the way that you're bringing your journey and you're bringing yes. the generations behind yes. you in yes. your family on yes. this journey. And yes. I guarantee that Batman had yes. at least one lathe and one mill in the back cave, man. I guarantee Ooh. you, there's no way he's making those batarangs and all that kind you, of stuff. Listen, I'm trying to tell you, listen, I, I can I can see Alfred in the back making all that stuff. They guys, listen, I'm telling you, Batman has CNC machines. He had Heck lathes, yeah. he has CNC machines. We don't know what brand, but we know, <laughs> come on, man, how else is he going to make that? Now... Maybe he, he might have had some uh, some three D printers. We never know. There you Back go. Then. So there so how go. was he how was he making his gags? It come from manufacturing. Yep, everything. Come on. It goes hand in hand. Batman he makes his own products. I'm gonna say that. <laughs> All right, tell us about your. Uh, you said you had a grandson, man. How old's your grandson? Uh, my, my grandson, I got a grandson. He, he just turned nine months. Um, I got, oh. three, I got actually, I got three grand grandkids. I got six six boys, five six boys, six girls. Wow. Um, I've been married. Uh, um, what ten years? We've been together fifteen years. Like I said, I got my son in, in, in this training right now. I'm I'm just waiting to just just get him in tuned into it. This is a trade that you can take it wherever you want anywhere you want and you can most definitely be guaranteed a job position and yeah. um my grand my grandson like i said i'm gonna i'm gonna kick him off with the little robotics <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna do the little robotics things first you know how it go um we're gonna Absolutely. start with legos and and we're gonna do some things like that and like i said it's about teaching and learning right now you know what i'm saying and this is the perfect opportunity for me to get my boys on board i love it man i love it uh danny uh I need your advice here. I, I, I need your opinion. Um, the manufacturing industry is a really slow one to turn and support different types of people, right? Mm -hmm. Within within the industry. So how can you come from a, a, a background that takes two populations that uh, manufacturing hasn't always celebrated, right? The black yes, community yes, and the yes, previously yes. incarcerated community. How can manufacturing at a, as an industry better support both those populations? Right. So, so as we know, uh, Jim, it, it, it is a, a white man's trade, and we we just want to just learn. We we, we want to learn the trade. 
uh, you got some uh, some shops like the shop that I'm in right now. They uh, they've been around for 40, 50 years now, and some wow. shops just don't want change. You get what I'm saying? I, I've I've been there for the last two years. Uh, the retention rate is crazy. So this is the year of retirement, as we know. Um, these next two next few years, they're going out the door. They're running out of gas, and it's like. I'm just trying to just introduce this company that I'm with right now. Like, hey, listen, I got a good thing going on. Um, I'm just listen to him. Just listen to me. Some companies just don't want to change. So for yeah. me, um, the, the people that's coming out of uh, coming out of the training facility, if I can't get them where I'm at, I refer them to to other companies that I know will hire them. You, you know what I'm saying? So um, um, even still, job um, job got a a, a 95 job placement once upon completion so you're going to get a job in the field or however you look at it but um i said some of these companies um jim they just don't want to change and much of you try and try we just want the little people we, we just want to just learn the trade and just become better at the trade as well yeah awesome i uh, opportunities it sounds like yes just just give people an opportunity uh that's all that's all that's all i ask coming through the door jim like yeah. i said um, um don't Please pay attention to my work ethics. I'm one of them guys, Jim. I can show you better than I can tell you. Um, I can. You see my resume. My resume is superb. Um, I got to turn my notifications sometimes off because I be getting so many notifications <laughs> for, for this position. I got to turn it off sometimes. Wow. But we, but we know in this field, like, this is a high-paid, high-level uh, 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 position. And, and these companies will, they will try to lowball you. And you just yeah. got to just hold that shield and just, just know your worth. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so... In in your experience in the industry, I mean, you've you've been in aerospace now, you've been in automotive, you've been uh, literally a, a auto repairman, right? Yes, Is that yes. what you did before you got yes. into the CNC side? Uh, you've worked for a variety of leaders, right? Um, how important is leadership uh, in building healthy company cultures in your experience? Well, that's, that's, nice. that's a good question. Uh, leadership is powerful. I got to lead by example. I, 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 done, I done screwed up so much time in my life. I got to lead by example. And, and I'm going through that right now. Uh, as a guy at my job, once again, 40, 50 years, they don't like change. Yeah. And, and I don't consider, he, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a director of whatever, and um, he don't want change in, 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 in I don't see him as, as a leader. So, but I can't let his leadership, ab lack of leadership abilities, stop my stop my work ethics. You get what I'm saying? So, yep. so, so dealing with that and, and knowing me and my work ethics and know how I move and know can't no man stop what I'm doing, regardless if it's at that company or not, it's my choice to stay there or not. But leadership is most definitely an important role. That's why I try to lead by example out here, just dealing with my family and my, and my children and just pointing them in, in the right direction. Yeah. Um, and that's what these companies lack, leadership yeah. in these companies, because what they do is they, they look for faults instead of the potential in, in, in their employees. And I, I've been fighting against that these last couple of companies. Like, hey, listen, I'm, I'm trying to pull your teeth. I'm trying to grow your company. Just invest in me. Invest in me. But I, I, I've just been getting roadblocks. So me sticking around is it, it, just only causing and wasting my time. You get yeah. what I'm saying? So I'm 46 years old. I don't have no more time to play, so I'm trying to hit that elevation and, and, and hit that peak. Yeah. But um, I know it's going to take time, and, and there's always patience behind it. But like I said, um, it, these companies lack leadership, and like I said, I can't let these these companies affect me like that. So I just continue my continue my growth. And if I feel as though that I can't grow no more. Then it's time for me to go. Not saying that it got anything to do with the company, but when I'm steady pulling out, listen, good ideas, this idea, that idea. Um, I had a, uh, um, they had a horse demo day down in uh in 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 uh in Pennsylvania, Thaddeus Stevenson College, where I got my um my yeah. horse certification. So I shot down there um one day, um um it. There's a few um, um technician guys down there. They was uh they was down there. Uh, I know them for the last four years. The the two different companies I I, I done been around. I've been seeing them come and go. So when I got down there, they were surprised to see me. Um, I had my horse gear, my horse hat. I had horse everything on because I'm a big horse fan, right? Yeah. 
So I get down there. It, 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 crazy how it sound. I was the only black guy in there, and everybody looking at me like, like, what is, what, why is he down there? But that didn't affect me though, because yeah. I came and 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 just so happened, I know four of the top guys in there. They was excited <laughs> to see me in there. Um, hey, Danny, hey, listen, look at this robot. We got this going on. We got that going on. Man, take some swag gear. Take this bag, man. Boom. So it was. It still turned out to be nothing but nothing but love there. Um, yeah. And um. Once I left there, I left there with, with good information. One of the guys gave gave me um, a brochure and said, "Hey, Danny, this is um, Phillips Hart's uh, maintenance and repair training program." I said, "Wow, this is this is good." He said, "Take this back to Tag and tell him that you're interested in, in the maintenance and repair program." So I said, "Okay, not only Jim that I'm going to be operating them, setting them up, programming them." Now I can help the company save money on repairing these machines. Right? Now, so, what else, so, what can't you do, my man? Man, man so, so I'm, I'm just trying to just get this under, this company to understand that. Like, listen, I'm locked in. I don't, I don't want to jump from company to company to company to company. I'm trying to lock you guys in. Work with me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna I'm I'm go the rest of the way with you guys. Yeah. But um, I presented it to him. Um, um. Um, Jim, the guy gave me a good price on it. Uh, I presented it to the owner. She shot it down. Everything that I've been presenting to them, they've been shooting it down. So my thing is, I am equipping myself and leveraging myself with the certifications that I need in this in, in this in this industry, so I can level up and get better in the trade as we go. Because technology is is advancing. Yeah, I gotta stay. I gotta stay. I gotta stay afloat with it. I gotta stay up to date with it. Absolutely. Well, and and you're a leader in your own right, right? Yeah. You, you don't yes. need a you do not need a a, a title yeah. to be a leader yeah. within an organization. You're you're leading, uh, whether they want you to be a leader. Or That's not. my goal. And, and so it's better for them to get on board with you because the the visibility, the the engagement, the effort that you bring to the table is then infectious within the facility, right? Jim, it, it's, it, it's kind of like, once again, I'm on my Batman-ish, trying to save the company, try, trying to save the company. And um, I said, I, I see I see the retention rate is going, I see the retention rate is, is, is give me a second, Jim. Yeah. I see, I see the retention rate is going skyrocket. You get what I'm saying? At the end of the step, bro. Um, I see the retention rate is going skyrocket, and I'm just trying to say the company we didn't lost. Uh, I'm gonna say about five to seven guys at the beginning of this year, and I knew it was going to come to come to this point. And I was just 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 preparing myself. Um, um, the end of the year, like, listen, I, I see something going out the pipeline. These guys about to retire. You got five guys about to go to another company. So I'm paying attention to the retention rate, but I'm not moving yet. Yeah. I'm holding ground because there's still opportunity there. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, so I do. Um, I took a, a, a chance to help save this company if they let me, though. Absolutely. Well, they, they've got to be open to it, right? They've got to be yes. just as open yes. as you are uh, to wanting to, to be that solution. Yes, yes, yes. I'm listening, Jim. No, no, you're good, man. Um, you, you mentioned something in, in your previous answer, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Or uh, an answer a couple ago when you were talking about uh, – bias to to your situation and so mm -hmm. let's let's dive a little bit deeper into that how can okay. companies change the bias that they have uh whether it's uh, about skin color race uh previously incarcerated or not uh special needs uh whatever gender right how can uh when when manufacturing organizations are going out there and recruiting the young people because all these people are retiring in the next you know three to five years how can how how can we better eliminate bias to to hire the people based on their certifications their skill sets their resumes versus the things that people are seeing some some people you know they they come they come straight into the basically you got this these certifications in your hand as it, a golden ticket. Um yeah. and some people just they, they just want the opportunity. Listen, give me a chance. I, I know I'm entry level, just give me a chance. And um and I'm a, I can show you better, I can tell you. But some people like for myself, I'm a motivator. 
um, I'm, I'm a self motivator. So if I get turned down on one job because of my, my background, guess what? I'm not going to keep moving. But some people don't have that that drive to do so. It, it, it all starts with in, individually. If you feel as though, um, even if you get hired at a company and you feel as though it's some, it's some issues going on, it's your choice to leave or not. Yeah. Um, but like Absolutely. I said, some companies, like I said, this company I'm with right now, some companies just don't don't accept change, Jim. And like I said, it all boils down to are you going to accept what you, your working condition or are you just going to keep it moving to the next one that's going to appreciate you and, and, and your value there? Listen, yeah. I, my, my, my certification speaks for itself. I'm coming through the door with great work ethics. Give yeah. me some time and, and let me put some time in to see what I can do. That's all we ask is for a chance. And that's with anybody of color. Um, yeah. Anybody of color, anybody in the trade. Uh, like, like you said, um, um, I know a, a guy that uh, he, he's kind of handicapped now, but guess what? He's a hell of a machinist. <laughs> they, can't, they, they can't take that from him. Yeah. But you know what? He comes straight through the door with, with, a limp, with a limp finger, a limp hand, and, but he's still getting it done. Yeah. But then look at that like, okay, he's not capable of doing that. But 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 he is capable of doing it because he he's been in the field already, yeah. and uh, we we talking about lifting uh, a few pounds with his lip of hand. I didn't see it, but some right. companies were shown against that. Like okay, he's not capable of, of lifting heavy objects, which Got if it. you in terms if you give somebody a chance, you would you wouldn't know what to do with him. Yeah, absolutely. And, he, and he's a Caucasian guy, buddy of mine named John. His <laughs> hand is limp, but guess what, Jim, he gets it done. He's a good machinist. Man, he's a hell of a machine, and he and he messes his hand up in the field. And and, oh. and and what I do is I learn from him. Yeah. He teaches me what to do and what not to do. So I, yeah. I learn from the great machines as well. You get what I'm saying? But yeah, um, absolutely. But as far as changing the company's gym, some companies just don't want change. Into yeah. his all, into his over, into his last minute when these companies coming there. Hey, we don't see too many black guys. We don't see too many um Asian guys. We don't see too many Hispanics or whites. Hey, what's the problem? Then they want to get everybody together. Now you get what I'm saying? Yep. Now they want to be versus um, um get everybody grouped up and, and come together. Now yep. by, by the time it's too late, the company's about to go under now. Yep. Oh yeah. So uh, how do you suggest that we coach? the the next generation of black manufacturers to i don't want to say adapt to uh the the companies that aren't willing to change because i don't think it's their job to adapt to these companies that aren't willing to change right how do we how do we coach them uh and, and mentor them and support them uh through their their rise to the top and, and when they're done with these uh these certificate programs like, like for instance, um, I got my my son coming out of training right now. Yeah. Um, he was having issues with his, his instructor, right? Okay. S same thing with with us in the regular jobs. Um, we have issues without without managers. Managers just sometimes just don't manage. Like yep. I was telling my son, um, uh, uh, don't look at. I don't, I don't need you to look at it as if he's on your back and he he he. he Trust me, he see the potential in you. Some companies, they will see the potential in you, and they will push you to, to drive even more. So I tell my son, like, listen, pay attention to his leadership. I said, um, he's pushing you in the right direction. He see that you a top of your class, so he see that you're a leader, so he's trying to direct you in that right direction. Just pay attention. Don't always look at it as if somebody's hard on your back. I've been hard on your back for years. So I'm yeah. not I'm, I'm not being hard for a reason. I'm just instructing you, just giving you the basic instructions so you can know how to move. And yeah. that's what your instructor doing. But all companies, you're not going to get that good that good manager and this understanding manager. You're not going to get that. That's yeah. in the fairy tale world sometimes. But they, these it's companies that's out here. Uh all management, all management is not assholes, but some are. Yeah. It's what you want to deal with or not, Jim. That's the ball game. Yep. Black, white, I'm um, Chinese. If you get into a, a, a company and you feel as though you 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 being uh, uh shunned upon, then you need to go. Yep. You be a fool to stay there. You got certifications. You you need to go. Yep. And I hold firm with my certifications. Let's, let's, so, uh, Danny. Uh, when you and I connected, I started seeing a lot more about Jark on yeah. LinkedIn. Um, and it seems like a really amazing organization, mission-driven organization 
tell us about their mission. Tell us about what they do. I mean, you got your certifications from there. What else do they do? All right. So, so I, once again, I got I got connected through um, my career coach, Miss Murray, and uh, basically J Jane Adams. They have, uh, I believe, three locations. They have uh, one organization in Chicago, here in Baltimore, and they just opened up a new one in Rhode Island. Jane wow. Adams, um, back in uh, the slave era. Uh, uh, I done my I done a little bit of research on it. She was she was one of the ones that was in her money, and she wanted to help the homeless and open up a uh, uh, homeless shelters and, and and social security and, and the health benefits towards the black people that was that, that was being treated mis that was being mistreated. Yeah. And uh, from there, she just had corporations that the corporation just kind of go around and help people, and that's where it started coming from poverty. People in poverty wow. don't know how to live and, 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 and maintain throughout the course of life. So she opened up different health facilities and uh, 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 um, occupation facilities and work facilities just to help the people um, come up and, 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 be, and become successful. Um, so fast forward, it's still going on to this day. Uh, wow. Some people, some people come from poverty. Some people just, just, just come, just, just bad off and, and. Yeah. This is the perfect opportunity for them to just get in there. Uh, they got CNC machining. They got um, welding. Uh, they got access to um, and resources to other training. Uh, like for for instance, uh, we, they got. I believe they got CNC. Um, CNA. I'm sorry. CNA, GNA. They got um, access and resources to other uh, occupations. So it's wow. most definitely a good place to start if you don't have any direction. Um, yeah. They got credit building programs in there, first time homeowners programs. So I took advantage of all them situations. And now fast forward, everything is all right. I'm married, um, house, car. So everything is falling in place. Got to have my own business outside of the, my primary CNC job. Um, and, and it started, a lot of it started from, uh, from job, just the introduction of Miss Murray coming to that facility and just introduced me to this, um, this training facility and they just opened up so many doors. And that's why I'm always recommending, um, and sending people that way just so they can, can get certified just to get them to, to understand that, Hey, listen, I got out of it. I had a criminal background. If I can do it, come on, you can do it too. If you're not doing it, you are bullshitting. Sorry. Yep. Excuse my words. You no, no. And, and it's time and it's time and it's time to just get off your ass. And just simple as that. There's too many job opportunities out here for you not to be employed right now. Yeah, absolutely. No, and, I, and we, I love it. And we talked to a, a guy right now that that was in uh fifty thousand dollars in child support, uh backed up in child support, but that ain't stopped me. Uh then we had a, a guy uh who, who just came all odds was against him. Now look at me. I'm Batman, Jim. You are Batman. I'm Batman. You are Batman. I'm Batman. You can't. I can't. I, I, I want that to be the the name of your book. Uh, That's when it. you write when you write your autobiography, man. Yes. Please, yes. I just want the title to be I'm Batman. Yeah. Uh, and That's it's it. you with That's the it. the batarang, right? That and is like it. making one on the CNC machine. That's um, it. That's it. That's my next move. So, Danny, uh, can you connect me with somebody at Jark? Most definitely, most definitely, most definitely. Uh, um, I can I can connect you straight to the vice president or the vi or, or the VP. Like that's that's not a game. Like this is what it's about the network, and that's yeah. what I've been doing. I've been networking and sending people in that direction so they can become successful and, and and go through what I what I went through. You get what I'm saying? I do. So, I I I just want to connect with them uh, for a couple of different reasons, right? I'd, okay. I'd love to do an episode on them, uh, but also I I have a uh, apprenticeship program here in Arizona that right. I uh, work with that uh, I'd love to get their take and see if yes. there's a collaboration that we can do there. Um, so there's a lot of different things that I think we can do. Um, Danny, uh, we're kind of wrapping up here on time. Um, okay. Let me ask you two more questions. Got you, I got you. Uh, one, how can uh, we understand that that companies are afraid of change, right? Yes, we get that. Yes, yes, yes. The ones who are willing to make the change and willing to hire people from diverse backgrounds and be more inclusive, right? Mm -hmm. How can we uh, celebrate? 
the black community that works within our organizations better, right? How can we uh, recognize and celebrate uh, the, those kinds of groups within our organizations? Um, um, first, first, it's, it start with, uh, of course, the leaders. Uh, okay. We got a lot of leaders out here, and, and, and we just got to just step in these communities and, and just present what's out there. Um, Jock, yeah. they, Jock, they had a, a thing called Cheers for Careers. They done a walk through the neighborhood, and, and they just introducing people to the manufacturing, to the CNA, to the welding. Like, hey, listen, we right up the street. We got job opportunities for you. So it's just about um, just putting word of mouth and just, hey, listen, this is, I got a career for you, a trade for you that you might not be uh, uh, familiar with. But listen, give me a chance. Let me help you. Help me to yeah. help you. Like, um, I was just at Royal Farms uh, yesterday, seeing a young man in, in, in a Royal Farms line. There's nothing wrong with having a, a you know, a, a regular job. Yeah. Um, he had gold teeth in his mouth. So I said, I said, hey, my man, I said, um, you like doing what you're doing? He said, yeah, it, it, it's something like that. He said, I'm a rapper, though. I said, hello, I, I'm in the line right there having a, having a conversation with him. He said, I'm a rapper. Though. I said, listen, I got a perfect opportunity for you. I got training for you. He looked at me with his eyes open like, really? So I gave him the information and I pulled it to him. He instantly texted me. That's what we need to do. You know what I'm saying? They're not yeah. going to reach out and, and, and find nobody. We got to present it to them. Hey, listen, yeah. I got an opportunity for you. You young right now, you can get the ball rolling. I promise you, if you're sticking there, it'll be a good outcome later. But awesome. you got to rock with me. So that's that's what I've been doing. I've, I've been going around and I've just been, just been seeing, seeing a different, the youth and like, hey, listen, I got, I got a training facility for you. Would you be it. interested in it and making more money than you, what you're making right now? I if you it. are, if you're serious about what you're doing, you will text me in the next 20 minutes. And that's how I present it to them. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, if they text like me, it. they text me. I give, I, I give them the information. If they take it, they take it. If they don't, Jim, I'm on to the next. Yep, absolutely. So, Danny, um, you said you had another job uh, in addition to your machining job. What's your other job? So, my my primary, my full time, of course, you know, CNC machining. Right. Um, me and my wife, we have a CPR business as well. We call it the Healthy Heartbeats. Um, I've been po I've been reposting that business. Um, I've been a victim out here um, in these streets as far as uh, um, resuscitation. Uh, gunshot wounds. So why wouldn't I take up this train, this opportunity of, as being a CPR instructor to help the next person? Wow. So, um, so, so with that being said, you know, a lot of people, they out here, instead of helping and resuscitating or at least giving the 30 compressions, they rather whip out their phone and, and just pay attention to the phone and the atmosphere and everything around them instead of helping that person that could have been saved. Yeah. Not only that, um, I'm a victim of gunshot wounds. So I, t I also took up the Stop the Bleed instructor courses as well. So I'm also a CPR instructor, me and my wife, a CPR instructor, and a Stop the Bleed instructor as well. So not only that, I be, I be, I'm making myself more marketable. Yeah, what, absolutely. What company you know, Jim, that wouldn't take a machinist with all trades, not only that, in the CNC machine, but not only that, He's certified as a CPR instructor and and also a stop the bleed instructor as well. So I'm gonna put my hands in a whole cookie jar. So just just make myself well rounded in this field. Like why wouldn't I do, be a CPR? I had a guy on my job. Um, uh, I, I forget his name. He, when I first started, he had a seizure. Ain't nobody know what wow. to do. And I didn't know what to do at the time because I just got certified um last year. So if I if if the, in that case if I had a chance, I, I probably I would have helped him. But thank God he only had a seizure. Um, yeah. You got guys on the job all the time; they're getting cuts real bad on these in his in these in companies. Yeah. So I'm bringing an asset right at the table. I'm I bringing an asset right at the table. So it's about just just being well groomed all the way around, just so I can just just be groomed to be great, at Jim. You get what I'm saying? I, uh, dude, I love it. You are you are a true Renaissance man, my man, dude. You I'm, really I'm, are. I'm on it, man. I'm on it. I'm on yeah. it. Um, like uh, uh, I got um, me and my wife have the the. the I'm sorry, the CPR business. Uh, we got certified in the stop the bleed, and we got certified as being a, a Narcan, uh, a Nar a Narcon for wow. for overdose for people that's overdose. Yeah, There's a lot of that going on around here, Jim. 
Yeah. So, so, so why not take up the training course for that too as well? Good but once you, again, man. you got to be a willing participant to help the person out. You yep. can have the stuff in your hand, equipment in your hand, but these people letting people die and and hopefully mm. I can help the next person. That's all, Jim. I love it, man. Uh, Danny, last question for you. What didn't I ask you that you want to share with the listeners or viewers uh, of the podcast today? Uh, I want to say um, whatever whatever occupation and trade you you are you are, you are in, stick with the craft, and the better you get, just practice, practice, more practice, make perfect, just keep growing in whatever trade you're in. Like I said, build that empire, just keep growing in whatever it is, and that's all I can say, um, Jim. I'm taking. I'm taking. I'm going to try to take this manufacturing to the next level if I can. We got good ideas out here. So yeah. we're going to see how it go with this youth right here that we're dealing with. I love it. Hey, Danny, uh, I think you're an amazing human being, man. I appreciate it, I appreciate it Jim. I appreciate it. Uh, well, thank you very much for being on. I was looking through today uh, how long you and I have been working to try and get this to happen. Yes, it's, been yes. a, it's been a year. You that's, first uh, reached out a year ago, and now we got it happening, That's it. Man. That's it, Jim. So hey, I am hey. so happy. Thank you so much for being on, bud. I appreciate it, man. I hope everybody can relate to my story and grow. Like I said, there's it's always possibilities out here. And Absolutely. I'm, you, you gotta, I, was, I was told by uh, uh, OG, my uncle told me a long time ago, the fact, Danny, the fact that you're still alive today means there's a calling on your life for you to do something with the rest of your life. And right yeah. now, I'm just trying to get better my life. I said, I done screwed up so many years in my life. It's just time to just lead by example, be that leader for my kids and my legacy. That's it. That's a quote of the episode right there, That's man. It. You're doing it. You're doing it, and you're Batman at the same time. Uh, uh, and coming. folks... That's a wrap on today's amazing episode with Danny Hill Jr., whose journey yes. through the realms of aerospace and automotive manufacturing has not only inspired us, but given us invaluable insights into the significance of diversity, inclusivity, and culture in the manufacturing yes. industry. Yes. Danny's experiences from overcoming challenges to fostering positive work environments and champion championing initiatives that elevate company culture, safety, and performance have truly highlighted the power of perseverance, skill, and community in shaping the future in manufacturing. Remember to keep the conversation going and dive deeper into the stories that drive our industry forward by visiting us at manufacturingculturepodcast.com. A huge thank you to Speroni again for their unwavering support and sponsor sponsorship, making episodes like this one possible yes. and helping us share the impactful journeys of these amazing professionals like Danny. Don't forget to fuel your day and support our uh, our partner, Shop Floor Coffee. The show gets zero dollars for this, guys. Uh, yep. This all goes to support workforce development programs across the U.S. Uh, use the promo code SKILLUPAZ for a special listener discount uh, on your next order. It's 10% off, but also uh, SKILLUP then gets 20% of the proceeds from that coffee uh, back into uh, their bank account. It's not just coffee. It's motivation in a cup, perfectly brewed for the hardworking souls of the manufacturing world. If today's episode has sparked new ideas, inspired you, or simply given you food for yeah. thought, we ask that, that you share it with your friends, your colleagues, your grandma, anyone who appreciates the vibrant tapestry of people and stories in the manufacturing sector. Your ratings and reviews mean the world to us and help us spread the, world, the word about the intersection of manufacturing and culture. Yes. yes. Until next time, keep innovating, keep inspiring, and keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible in manufacturing. Thank you for listening.